，同我就会讲啦，哦，气泵味就系泵气咯 ，no no no。二零年第六条题目系有关于生态系统嘅，咁下面呢幅图啦就显示咗一个微型生态系统啦，透过鱼啦、微生物啦同埋植物之间嘅相互作用，令到鱼缸入面嘅污水咧系可以用作为植物嘅生长嘅养料嘅。必要留意嘅就系呢一个微型生态系统咧，我哋系唔需要定期去施肥同埋换水嘅。咁所以呢一个生态友善嘅方法咧，就可以用嚟种植蔬菜啦，同埋养鱼咧，供人食用啦。讲下装置先啦，虽然啦，我哋唔需要定期换水同埋加肥料啦，但系咧，我哋仍然要加啲余量咧，俾啲鱼食嘅。咁啊，鱼缸入面有个气泵啦，咁跟住啦，亦都有个水泵，就将啲废水咧泵上去咧，灌溉植物嘅。当啲污水经过咗啲植物之后咧，佢就变翻干净噶咯，就会落翻去个鱼缸嗰处啦。我哋入题目咯 ，Part A 咧，佢就问啦。氨咧系一款有毒嘅物质，佢系鱼类主要嘅排泄物。嚟自于鱼缸嘅污水入面嘅氨咧，就可以转化成为植物嘅生长所需要嘅硝酸盐 （nitrate） 嘅。咁第一部分咧就系我哋指出参与上述转化嘅細菌名称啦。个转化就系由氨转化成硝酸盐嘅。咁呢条题目啦，自不然就系考紧我哋有关于氮循环嘅概念啦。咁我哋要知道氨啦，将佢转化成硝酸盐嘅时候啦，呢、這个过程咧就系硝化。咁啊，牽涉喺消化作用嘅細菌，自不然就係消化細菌啦。第一部分非常之直接搞掂咗咯。咁其實過往有關於氮循環嘅題目呢，十年呢，有七年我哋都見到佢㗎。咁所以你見得到啦，係一個非常之熱門嘅題目嚟嘅。接下就到第二部分啦，就描述下棵植物係點樣獲取到污水入面嘅硝酸鹽。并且利用呢啲硝酸盐咧，喺块叶嗰处去制造蛋白质嘅。咁呢条题目考紧啲乜嘢？而我哋又点样可以有系统咁样将我哋所学过嘅嘢表达出嚟咧？咁我哋就睇一个试考应答咯。咁第一部分咧，我哋就要讲翻喺个泥土入面嘅植物啦，系点样从个泥土当中去吸收呢个硝酸盐矿物质嘅咧？我哋都学过啦，植物咧个根部咧就系透过主动运输啦，同埋扩散啦，去吸收呢个矿物质嘅。而今次嘅矿物质咧，泛指嘅就系硝酸盐。然后啦，我哋就要讲下啦，当棵植物吸收咗呢个硝酸盐啦，咁究竟点样运送到去块叶嗰处咧？喺紫色嘅部分咧，我哋就要提及翻木质部 s i l e n vessel 咯，咁啊透过蒸腾牵引力啦，硝酸盐咧就会同埋啲水一齐穿过我哋嘅木质导管啦，就去到我哋嘅叶細胞嗰处啦。所以你一定要讲叶細胞啊，因为题目都系讲紧系喺叶嗰处去制造蛋白质啊嘛。然后当啲硝酸盐去到块叶嘅时候咧，就会同喺光合作用所制造嘅中间物啦，去结合成为氨基酸。然后啦，植物就将啲氨基酸将将佢砌埋砌埋，就变成一个蛋白质啦。咁今次嘅题目啦，你可想而知咧，其实佢再问埋你，棵植物嘅細胞入面做到呢个 transcription、translation、转译、转录得唔得啊？梗系可以啦。咁但系今次咧，佢就冇问得咁深入嘅。咁啊，過往呢，其實有關於木質部啦、韌皮部啦，我哋都有相關題目嘅礦物質嘅吸收啦、礦物質對棵植物嘅用處啦。咁我哋過往呢，都有題目去做過嘅。咁啊，快快手睇下片，溫下書啦噃。跟住去到拍 B 啦，你見到個魚缸嗰度呢，有個氣泵㗎。咁啊，發揮咗一啲重要嘅作用。題目就要我哋描述下呢啲作用啦。同我就會講啦，哦，描述氣泵嘅功能，氣泵咪就係、是。泵气咯 ，no no no， 今次嘅题目系讲紧气泵有一个重要嘅功能，即系其实佢系问紧你气泵嘅重要性啊，咁多位。咁我气泵有咩重要性咧？我哋其实就系问紧我哋氧气有咩咁重要？咁氧气有咩咁重要啊？以前我哋都学过噶啦，呼吸作用要用到氧气啦，分解作用要用到氧气啦，消化作用都要用到氧气嘅。咁有关于重要性嘅题目啦，不得不提嘅就系直线抽击答题法啦。今次讲紧嘅重要性系个气泵嘅重要性。虽然我系用氧气嚟提醒大家，但当你答题目嘅时候，系要讲个气泵提供足够嘅氧气，去俾啲生物一二三四，去俾啲生物咧进行呼吸作用，提供足够嘅氧气，去俾啲微生物，俾啲分解者咧，就将嗰啲鱼嘅排泄物就分解成为一啲。无机嘅物质，而个气泵咧，亦都系提供氧气，俾啲消化細菌进行消化作用。咁所以啦，一定系用气泵咧做个主角嘅，一二三。所以啦，你记紧个主角咧，其实系个气泵嚟嘅。
咁呢类题目咧有啲咩嘅变奏呢？咁下次可能就问你啦。如果一个泥土佢系积咗水嘅，英文叫 water lock， 即系个泥土咧已经系湿趯趯一撇撇嘅。咁對於啊喺呢個泥土入面嘅植物啦、分解者啦、細菌啦，會有啲咩嘅影響呢？咁啊，留言區留低你嘅答案啦，睇下你 concept 清唔清咯。跟住去到 pass 呢，就有一條因果題啦。個因呢，就係我哋唔覺意意外地加咗雙倍嘅雨量，而個果呢，就係啦，幾日之後有一部分嘅雨死咗。咁題目啦，就要我哋根據返對於物質循環嘅認知啦，就提出一個解釋去說明呢一個現象嘅。呢條題目啦，因果關係非常之明顯㗎啦，太多嘢食，啲魚死咗，死啦，係咪即係食得飽個頭啊？唔係，喎，題目係講緊要用返物質循環嘅概念，喎。所以嗰啲咩金魚記憶啊，佢唔記得咗自己食咗魚量啊，所以越食越多死咗呢，係唔可以答㗎喎。啲咩嘅原因呢？咁有两个导向嘅。第一啦，就係啲鱼食咗好多嘢食，啊，跟住就死咗㗎啦。又或者啦，啲鱼食唔晒所有嘢食，吓，跟住又死咗㗎啦。咁究竟点解呢？咁我哋啦就要諗下啦。如果啲鱼食咗好多嘢食嘅话，咁究竟啦啲鱼嘅排泄物会系啲乜嘢嘢呢？咁其实头先题目都有讲到噶啦，就係啲氨啊 ，ammonia 啦，系咪？又或者啦，当啲鱼食唔晒啲嘢食嘅话啦。咁對於呢啲有機嘅食物，又會發生啲咩事呢？從而去到最後尾呢，你都一定要提及返太高水平嘅氨，究竟啦，點解會搞到啲魚死咗呢？我哋先睇下第一個可能性啦，就係、是、啲魚呢食咗太多嘅嘢食啦。咁啊，當添加咗雙倍份量嘅魚量啦，魚所產生嘅氨呢，亦都會有所增加。而啲細菌亦都未能夠將所有嘅氨轉化成為硝酸鹽，所以啦，氨呢就會喺啲水度積聚啦。而當啲氨嘅水平達至一個致命嘅水平咧，就會將部分嘅魚殺死啦。又或者另一個可能性咯，啲魚食唔曬所有魚量啦，太多啦。咁原來啦，過剩嘅食物咧就會殘留喺水入面啦。咁自不然喺個魚缸入面咧就會多咗一啲有機嘅廢物啦。而啲腐敗嘅細菌啦、分解者啦，就會分解呢啲過剩嘅食物成為氨咯。而啲氨啦又會喺個水度積聚。而達至一個致命嘅水平咧，又會將一部分嘅魚殺死啦。其實所以讀敗我咧，個應用層面好廣泛嘅。你你唔需要死記嘅呢啲嘢，食得曬又會死，食唔曬又會死。你記得咁多個可能性咩？你反而要諗下啦。當啲魚食得太多魚糧嘅時候，我哋人都係啦，食得多屙得多係咪？點解食完飯一定要屙屎？咁啲魚個情況都係一樣嘅啫。又或者食唔曬嘅話啦，太多魚糧。原来对啲细菌嚟讲，啲鱼粮都可以成为佢哋嘅嘢食喎、哦。喺呢个情况底下啦，原来个鱼缸入面都会越嚟越多氨嘅积聚嘅，而啦就会杀死咗啲鱼啦。跟住又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目呢，就由生态系统开始嘅，考我哋两样嘢：物质循环同埋植物嘅成长啦。有关于物质循环呢，碳循环、氮循环，大家一定识㗎啦。啱啱都讲过啦，氮循环呢，十年呢，有七年都出咗嘅，而去到二零一八年呢，就碳循环啦。同埋你见到呢啲 M C 咧，我特登间咗俾你嘅十三十一、三二、三十三、三三、四、三五、三六，一出就两条两条咁样出噶啦，可想而知啦。呢一 part 系几咁重要啦。跟住去到植物成长啦，自不然有关矿物质事啦、NPK 同埋呢个 magnesium 啦，大家对于佢哋嘅用处啊、佢哋嘅缺乏症啊，大家一定要学识啦。而题目咧亦都考我哋有关于植物制造蛋白质嘅。咁啊，唔单止咧就吸收矿物质，仲要有埋光合作用咧，先可以制造到蛋白质嘅噃。整個裝置其實就係魚菜共生 （aquaponic） 嘅概念嚟㗎啦，咁當中就有魚啦、微生物啦同埋植物之間嘅互動啦。而家呢個裝置呢，就人為嘅啫，喺自然界有冇咁嘅情況啊？梗係有啦，佢就有蝦菜共生啦。基為蝦呢，其實就係一個蝦。微生物同埋植物之間嘅關係啦。以前啲人呢，就係刮咗一格格機圍呢，去養啲蝦嘅。佢唔係一個水塘咁簡單，其實呢，上面係養緊植物，下面就係養緊蝦嘅。除咗魚菜共生之外呢，另一個字眼我相信大家都識㗎啦，就係水間 h y d r o p o n i c 啦。大家呢，又要學識下點樣比較下水間同埋魚菜共生啦。咁特別嚟講呢，水間呢，我哋係講緊唔用泥土嘅，而佢嘅温度啊、濕度啊、光度啊，甚至淋水呢。嘅時間咧都係好好咁調控咗嘅。
咁其實呢一幅圖呢，就係香港嘅一個水間嘅場地啦。你下面呢，見到有埋魚添，佢做埋魚菜共生嘅，所以你見得到呢，佢根本就已經係一個商業規模性嘅生產嚟㗎啦。為嘅呢，就係應付地球嘅糧食危機啦。咁啊，亦都趁呢個機會呢，介紹下聯合國嘅可持續發展嘅目標啦，糧食危機啦，清潔嘅能源啦，無論係水入面嘅生物啦，陸地入面嘅生物啦，氣候變化啦。其實都同我哋呢個水耕啊，或者魚菜共生呢一類型嘅商業模型呢，係好大關係嘅。所以大家呢，要明白到呢，我哋今日讀拜柯呢，其實對我哋他日啊，要發展我哋嘅事業呢，係有好多款唔同嘅出路㗎。Two O Two O Question Six is about ecosystem. The diagram shows a mini ecosystem in which wastewater from a fish tank is used as a source of nutrients for plant growth by making use of interaction among fish, microorganisms, and plants. And there is a special feature of this setup: adding fertilizer and periodic change of water are not necessary. It is an eco-friendly way to grow vegetables and raise fish for human consumption. So you can see that we have the tank, and then there is a air pump, and there is a water pump. Pump the wastewater to the soil, and then there will be clean water go back to the tank. Though we do not need to add fertilizer for the plants, we still need to add fish food for the fish. Okay, so let's take a look at the question. Part A: Ammonia, a toxic substance, is the major waste product excreted by the fish. Ammonia in wastewater from the fish tank can be converted into nitrate, which is required by plants for growth. So for part one, name the bacteria involved in the conversion. This question checks us the concept of the nitrogen cycle, especially for the ammonium compound is converted to the nitrate through the process of nitrification. So we need to recall the role of the bacteria involved in the nitrogen cycle, especially nitrification, and the answer. Is very straightforward nitrifying bacteria, and then there are lots of questions about nitrogen cycle in past paper. Ten years, there are seven years for the question about the nitrogen cycle, and then for part two, describe how plants can obtain nitrate from the wastewater and make use of it for protein synthesis in their leaves. So let's take a look at the scaffolding. How can we present the idea in a systematic way? So for the first part, we need to recall how do the plants absorb minerals from the wastewater. So the plants they can absorb the minerals. For the plants, they can absorb the minerals by diffusion and active transport, and the minerals will be transport to the xylem vessel. And recall how is the water transport related to the mineral transport, especially how is the nitrate transported from the root to the leaves. So in the xylem vessel. By the transpiration pool, the nitrate will be transported upwards to the leaf cells with the water, because the minerals they are water soluble. And remember, you need to mention the leaf cells. And in the leaf cells, nitrate combines with the intermediate products from photosynthesis to form amino acid. And the amino acid they are used in the protein synthesis. Although this question doesn't ask you about the transcription translation, it may be a bit far away. But maybe next time it can ask you how do the plant cells produce protein. And in the past, there are lots of questions about the xylem vessel, phloem vessel, what are their functions, and then what is the function of the minerals and any mineral deficiency in the plants. And then for part B, it's about the operation of the whole setup. Air pump. Performs some important functions in the system, and we are going to describe these functions. Therefore, is talking about the importance of the air pump, not only the function. So you may think that, oh, Mister Lang, I know that function of the air pump, ma, is going to pump the air, lo. Oh, good. Nani, nani. However. Is talking about the important function, or is talking about the importance of the air pump? And I try to give you hints. Is talking about the importance of oxygen for respiration, decomposition, and nitrification. And remember that this question is asking the importance of the air pump. Therefore, we need to answer the question straight to the point. The subject is the air pump. Therefore, in our answer, we need to say that the air pump is to ensure there is sufficient oxygen for respiration. The air pump is to provide oxygen for decomposition. 
The air pump is to provide the oxygen for nitrification. Don't misunderstand that this question is asking the importance of oxygen. It's just a hint for you to think about the importance of the air pump. And you can imagine the possible question variation state any impact of the waterlogged soil, the plants, the composer, and the bacteria. So you can leave your answer and check it in the comment section. For part C, if double the amount of fish food is added accidentally, some fish will die a few days later. Based on your knowledge of the cycling of materials, suggest and explain for this phenomenon. So this question is talking about the cause and effect. Cause is the excess food source, and the effect is some fish die. So what is the logic between that? So you may think that, oh, I know Mr. Leung heard that the fish, they only have three second memory. So they forget when do they eat the food, and then they keep eating the food, and then they die. No, 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 you need to answer it based on the knowledge of the cycling of material. So there are two possibilities. What if the fish eat a lot of the food? And what if the fish cannot consume all the food? What will happen and lead to the result some fish die? So the idea can be you need to identify any metabolic waste will be excreted by the fish. The more they eat, the more metabolic waste they will produce, right? And what if they cannot consume all the food? So what will happen to this excess organic food? And finally, you need to record the impact of high level of ammonia on the fish to make them die. So the first possibility is that the ammonia produced by the fish increases as the amount of food is doubled because they eat a lot, they excrete a lot. And the bacteria fail to convert all the ammonia to nitrate because the time is too short. As a result, the ammonia will accumulate in the water to a certain level which is lethal to the fish and kill the fish. So what if they cannot consume all the food? So the food will be decomposed by the putrefying bacteria or the decomposer into the ammonia. And as a result, ammonia will accumulate in the water to a certain level which is lethal to the fish and kill the fish. Let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question is about the ecosystem and there are two main concepts is checking, cycling of material and uh, plant growth. So for the cycling of material, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, you can see that a lot of questions, no matter MC or long question, it's about that. Even this question is about nitrogen cycle, right? So you can see the MC question, long question, 10 years, I can say that every year we can really see the cycling of material, no matter in MC or uh, long question. Most of the question, they are nitrogen cycle, and in 2018, it's about the carbon cycle, and then you can take a look at the MC question. There are always two questions together 30 31 32 33 33 34 and 45 46 so you can see that starting from 2013 to 2021 including this year 2020 every year you see nitrogen cycle right and for the plant growth we learn about the minerals npk and the magnesium so it's a function of these minerals and any deficiency if they do not absorb sufficient amount of the minerals we do not only talk about the minerals we also talk about the photosynthesis and then we need the intermediate product to combine with the nitrate to form the amino acid and for protein synthesis and in this question this setup actually is a aquaponic model. So we have the fish, nitrifying bacteria, and the plants. So it is an artificial setup. So what about in nature? Surely the plants, the animals, they live together. That's the key way shim. Natural environment, the plants, water, and the animals, they live together. For, and they have such beautiful interaction. And apart from the aquaponic, we have the hydroponic as well. So what is the difference between them? or the traditional farming. For example, hydroponic, we do not rely on the soil, and then we can keep the light intensity, humidity, and the wind speed, and then temperature well in the building. The building business scale to produce the food in Hong Kong, and even see the fish here. So it is a hydroponic plus the aquaponic system together. And it's a way to deal with the food crisis as well. And I would like to grab this chance to talk about the sustainable development goals by the UN, United Nations. So you can see that zero hunger, affordable and clean energy, life below water, life on the land. And you will see that 
by attaining the biology knowledge, so there are lots of jobs, occupation for us to do and make contribution to the sustainable development in the world.